In this video I'm going to show you how to implement logging in with your Google account and how to hook it up with your Firebase authentication. Before we start coding, we have to go into the Firebase console to set up a couple of things. As you will soon see, it's a lot simpler to set up Google authentication as opposed to Facebook authentication where you have a lot of setup steps. In Google there is just one thing we need to do. In the Firebase console, go to your authentication tab and go into the sign in methods and there you will find Google. Here it says Google sign in is automatically configured for iOS and web apps, but for Android we're going to have to add an SHA1 fingerprint. The purpose of this is pretty much the same one with Facebook, it's just that it's going to be a different key. On Facebook we added a certain key just so they know the requests coming from our Android apps are legit. We are doing the same thing for Google now. The only difference is we're using a different command that is going to output a different key. So here on the website you can see that we have the command for Windows and for Mac and Linux and that will output an SHA1 key and then we're going to use that SHA1 key to add a fingerprint over here in the Firebase project settings. If we just copy and paste the command from the website into the command line on Windows it will not work because the command is in two lines. So before pasting it into the command line you should open notepad and remove the slash at the end of the first line and just merge the two lines together. And then you can copy and paste it into the command line. So it's going to ask you for a key store password, which by default is Android, and now we have our keys. You want to copy the SHA1 key that you see in the output of the command and paste it into your Firebase project settings. Then after you click save, you should be good. Then you want to go back to your Firebase authentication tab and enable the Google sign-in method. After you click save, you should be good to go. Okay, now to the decoding part. Let's show a loading indicator, make a Google sign-in instance where we're going to put in an email scope. A scope is basically where we request all of these individual pieces of data we need from our user. For us, we just need the email. Then we're going to have everything in the try block just so we can handle errors. Then we're going to attempt a Google sign-in and if everything goes correctly, we should be getting a result that's not null. So if it's null, let's just stop showing of the loading indicator. And then let's get the Google authentication instance. And using the access token and ID token from the instance, we're going to create a credential that we're going to use to sign into Firebase. And after that, if everything goes correctly, we're just going to insert the new user into the user's Firebase collection. Just like we did with Facebook. We're going to put in the email, the photo URL and the display name. And after that is done, we're going to redirect the user to the home page. And after that is done, we're going to catch the exceptions that may occur. So here we're going to do the same thing we did in the Facebook authentication part, where we just handled all of these error codes and made a user-friendly message. And after that is done, we're just going to show the error message to the user. In case something else fails that's not Firebase related, we're just going to display a pop-up that says an unknown error occurred. And finally, we're just going to hide the loading indicator. When we run the app and try to sign in with Google, it's going to give me an option to sign in with one of my accounts. And after I select the account, it's going to take a minute, and then it takes me straight to the home page. That's it. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to upload images and files using Firebase Cloud Storage.